Hello, my name is Michael Watson. I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you guys through the Ableton Live manual. And in this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to apply follow actions in your various music projects. Okay, so some fun things you can do with follow actions is I've got a couple MIDI clips set up here. Basically, the content, the melodic content of all these MIDI clips is the same. They're the same for notes, but I've changed the envelope settings bit by bit as you go down in this group. You'll hear the clip, but it basically you hear the same melodic content, but I've changed the envelopes on the different MIDI clips and so it adds some variation. Obviously you can make a whole lot more clips and make the changes very subtle, like add some transposition changes between the various clips and add some transposition changes between the clips just to give it subtle changes. But in this way, you can use the same melodic clip, but create variation as it loops through the entire track. Okay, another thing you can do is you can loop parts of the clip. So let's take this clip over here. Let's take this top clip over here. Let's make it just a bit quicker and uh, a duplicate it. So Say I want the first bit of this clip to be looped a couple times before it plays the whole thing through. I've made two clips and I'll just make the follow action here to be one beat and I'll set this to next. So what this is going to do, it's going to play one beat of this loop and then it's going to jump to the next clip, which is obviously the same clip as you just saw me duplicate it. But for this clip, I want it to play through the whole clip and then just loop the clip. You can also create drum loops and similarly to what I did with my MIDI over here, you can create a drum loop and make many copies of it and add small changes to the various drum loops, loop it through. Another thing you can also do is change the start and end time of your various clips. So to change the start and end times, you need to go to your notes box over here. R note that I'm in a MIDI clip right now, not an audio clip. To get this notes thing, go to your clip box and make sure this little notes button is highlighted and you'll get this box and on the right side of the box you've got your start and your end time. So if I want this to start on the first bar but the second beat, it's only going to start playing from here, in which case you can also start doing some really interesting things if you set the start times at different places and then loop it through, especially if it's a drum track. And I've shown you how to loop the beginning of a clip. What if you want to loop the end of a clip? Well, to do that, it's a little bit more tricky, but it's not that tricky. Uh, go to Arrangement View, or actually take your clip, drag it to the right into Arrangement View, and uh, basically I'm going to make two of the same clip, but one clip is only going to be the ending, and then we're going to loop that part. So I'm in Arrangement View here, I'm going to take the end, I'm hitting Command E to split the clip, as you can see I've split it. I'm going to drag this back into my session view and I'm going to put it down here. So basically what I have here is your full clip and here I've just got the last little section of the clip. And if I want to loop this last section of the clip, I'm going to follow action and uh, let's just play the full thing. Let's play it again. And this one, we're just going to play the next one. Another way you can just get the second part of the clip is to just move these markers over here. That way when I launch this clip, I'm only going to get the last little bit. And another cool thing you can do is if you've got an installation in a sound gallery and you want continuous sound but you never want it to be exactly the same, you just have to tweak these settings to make sure the follow actions don't end up in some repetitive cycle. But one of the great things you can do is make one clip slightly longer than the next one. If I've got these MIDI clips and these audio clips playing at the same time, then what I can do is make the last clip in this set of MIDI clips slightly longer, but keep the audio one the same. That way, by the time I get to the end of this audio cycle and I start again, I'll still be busy with this MIDI clip cycle, in which case the second time around I get to the top of this MIDI track, things are going to be out of sync and so you're never really going to hear the same exact thing twice. And this way you can keep it looping for hours and create an atmosphere that doesn't get boring and repetitive. Obviously you're going to need a whole lot more clips than this unless your clips are really long. But yeah, the most important thing is just to know your settings here, have fun, find out what works for you, and if you're in a live performance setting, make sure your follow actions are set up really well.
If you know of any other applications or follow actions that I've missed out on, please do leave them in the comments below so that we all can learn from you. And next week we're doing chapter 14 from the Ableton Live manual. If you also want to learn through the whole Ableton Live manual, then follow along. It's not too late to join and I'll see you next week.